the education is outdated. Do you know every class in Vietnam has at least 500 exam papers every semester. Each teacher has around four classes, which implies that they must grade approximately 2,000 exam papers each semester. Let's assume they have 45 seconds to verify the exam. Open a spreadsheet file, pick a name, update your score, double and then triple check. It'll take around 1,500 minutes to work with our salary. Consider how much time they spend on things that have no effect on education. So how can we solve that? Hello, welcome back. This is Mr. Yai Yai. In today's video, I'll show you how to update the scores with deep learning. Look at the test paper. Our goal is to extract this information, name, student ID, and score, to update it in spreadsheet file. Okay, let's go. So here, text detection, uh, I have compared between its detector and scale space technique. Is is like um, deep learning technique. So it have two main stages. The first stage is fully convolutional network, where they will have the output is the probability of the text and the location of the text. And the second stage is non-max suppression to sum the bounding box into one last final text box. The scale space technique is like an um, image processing technique. We have three main steps. Uh, the first step is line segmentation, and maybe we can remove the horizontal or vertical line of the paper. The second is we make the blob line feature right here with Gaussian filter and um, maybe blurring. And finally, we use the criteria of the width, height, ratio, or maybe area to segment the words. Text recognition model, I use CRNN with CTC loss function. CRNN is the combination of CNA, which is really good with um, image feature extracting without uh, affected by uh, rotating or scaling. RNA is really good with series data like music, the text or something, uh, because they can use the previous uh, character, the previous information to update for the current information. And final is the transcription layer here. They will convert the matrix output of RNA into the final text. CTC loss function. The advantage of it is it reduces the cost, the expense of uh, uh, the expense and the manual labor to to label uh, to label every character and the time step. We just have uh, with CTC loss, we just need to label the word and the image of the word. Encoding uh, encode here is they uh, create correct alignments of ground truth. Uh, for example, for the sun here. Uh, they have blank space and maybe double the character right here to make um, to make the right alignments. And the objective is to maximize the probability of the sun uh, of the output mat uh, matrix of RNA. And the probability of the sun here is the uh, the sum of the probability of all the alignments here. Decode uh, we have a lot of techniques like the word beam search, grid search. Uh, prefix, but the common idea is to remove the blank space or maybe just some uh, the double character here into one character. The results. So this is the flowchart of uh, training and recognizing handwritten text. We have two main phases, the train phase and the text phase, but they have three common steps. The first step is image processing like blurring, Gaussian filter, uh, rotating, scaling to the right position. Uh, second is text detection. It you know, usually include the word segmentation. And finally, we uh, extract the feature, image feature, uh, and, and recognize them. It means we convert the image matrix into ASCII code for the computer to understand. Image preprocessing. So the input image will um, include 
two main information. The first information is the test paper, and the second is the the background information like desk. Um, and furthermore, the test paper is not in the right angle for recognition. Uh, here I have uh, image alignment technique. Is the camera? I would compare. Uh, I would compare the input image to the sample with um, the corner, the edge, and the right image. Here is the result of image alignment technique. After that, I grayscale um, uh, and blurring to remove noise. And here we will identify the biggest uh, rectangle right here with uh, drawing contour with uh, criteria like the contour here must have four edges and the criteria of width and height ratio and the area criteria. So after we draw the contour and identify the coordinate of the X and Y here, we can move the fixed pixels to extract three main information that is score, name and student ID right here. So text detection, I compare is and scale space. So the first glance is the result of is is wrong. Is can just um, extract two out of three words, but scale space is right. The is is a deep learning technique, so it's lower complex and uh, requires stronger laptop. So my laptop is not able to run is in real time, but uh, scale space. Um, more suitable with the system and with my laptop. Uh, furthermore, uh, it has to resize the original uh, original image to the multi uh, to the multitude of 32. Like uh, the original size is 55 550. Uh, we have to resize it into 64 and 576. But uh, in this project, I will use the scale space technique. Um, here you can see some blurring image and after the threshold it can lead to the bad results. Here I will uh, increase contrast with top head and black head transform. You can see the result is much better right here. And uh, the threshold, adaptive threshold is really good with uh, the image, the big image and non-uniform lighting uh, by calculating a lot of threshold on one image. So the image will be separated into grid and they will calculate the threshold T on each grid. So that's why they can um, you know, tackle with non-uniform uh, lightning. But you, know, you can see that after using adaptive threshold, we get a lot of noise. Uh, this picture here is after I use the blurring tool, but they have they re retain a lot of noise and you can see that the horizontal line here is really hard to to word segment uh, correctly but also threshold right here um, they're good they're not really remain a lot of noise but you can see that the the rock is thinner um, but also uh, also is good in this project because the image after extract is really tiny compared to the original image so um, the non uh, uniform lighting is not really uh, is not really a problem in this case so i use also threshold for this um, project so after that i remove the horizontal line and remove the circle here uh, of the score and remove noise and we have the final result uh, name, student ID, and the score right here is it's really good result. The model structure and training phase. I use two model structures uh, for two tasks. The first task is to recognize the word, which means the name, and the second model for uh, recognizing the numbers, which is uh, the student ID and the score. The input image would be uh, standardized, uh, normalized, uh, transposed and padding to uh, fixed size 128 and 32 pixels uh, to feed into the CNN of VGG16. Uh, we have um, convolutional max pooling and batch normalization layer and then they feed into attention layer. 
attention layer is like a upgrade of LSTM to increase the recognition performance. Here I use uh, by LSTM. So why by LSTM and not uh, RNN? Because uh, RNN we have some drawbacks with um, exploding gradient um, and vanishing gradient. You know that just short term memory. But LSTM is long short term memory. They can uh, remain uh, the information from far away. The by the term by here is bi directional, which means they can use the previous character and subsequent character to update for the current character. Uh, the transcript uh, transcript layer here I use the word beam search with the lexicon search. Uh, the lexicon search is the dictionary of uh, is the search through the dictionary of the class list. Uh, some more tricks I use is uh, data augmentation, changing learning rates uh, with epochs and early stopping. Evaluation on 122 images dataset. So it includes uh, 122 test image of just one information that is my name and my student ID and one score right here with uh, 122 different backgrounds camera angles and lighting to evaluate name and student IDs uh, with the different with the changes in the image pre-processing stages and the changes on the model. So here I use the index, um, the character error rate and the word error rate and lexicon search on the class on the class list of 245 uh, students. So as you can see that the first three uh, this is the result of name recognition. So as you can see that the first three columns here, uh, we have the result um, is pretty good. But uh, attention here, we, uh, we can see that the CER is decreased a little bit, which is good. But the WER is increasing, which is not good. But why did I use um, attention? I uh, recognize that if the model without the attention, if it's right, it can be really right, like 100%. Uh, but if it's wrong, it can be really wrong, like uh, 20 to 30%. But with attention, attention is like a mean calculation technique. So when it uh, when it's right, it's not really at right. It's like uh, 80 to 90% right. But when it's wrong, remain uh, enough information for the lexicon search right here to uh, to have the good result so uh, the result with attention is about is below one percent but the result without attention is about uh, two to three percent so uh, the results of student, uh, student ID recognition here in student ID recognition I uh, use the best model um, here, but I change the way I create data. So you can see the first three columns is I create uh, data from the MNIST dataset, uh, seven digit number or uh, variable length of a number or maybe rotate scale. Each number we can see that the WER is still 100%, which is really bad. Then, uh, but then I realized that the image from the MNIST data, the MNIST data have the size. The fixed size 28, uh, 28 pixels, but uh, so they have a large edge, so we have to um, shorten the distance between the digits. And then I use scale and rotate uh, on the whole image, we got a good result. Then I add real data about 800 images, which include uh, 250 images, is for uh, it's like a number with variable length is for um, uh, student ID recognition and 550 images remain is for a uh, score it's like a uh, 1.25 7.8 uh, maybe is the images so the lexicon search is quite good but if we lexicon search with a format of name and student ID at the same time we can get uh, CER and WER is equal to 0%, which is the accuracy is 100% in finding the index of the student. 
So evaluation on 100 unconstrained images. Unconstrained mean unconstrained about the phone type, a uh, phone size, and spacing between the word between the uh, the number. The number here can uh, out of the uh, the circle limitation. It for um, evaluating the name, student ID, and score recognition under the back condition. So you can see uh, the result here. I will move on. Uh, the name, student ID. That is the index. The index. Uh, the index of recognition on 100 unconstrained images. You can see the result right here is quite good. So common mistakes are the phone ties not in data train. So you can see the first character of each word here is not in the data train. Uh, the wrong word segmentation or the similarity of the information like uh, this information and this information which is it's just different uh, for two characters. The number two here, number three here, the U here and the A here. For the score recognition, uh, you can see the the result here is not really good. It's can uh, with this result we can use it in uh, real life. So uh, some of the mistakes are because of the user. Uh, number five right here is out of the circle limitation, so it is gone. Here is because of the blurring image leads to the information lost after the threshold. So as I said before, we can fix that with uh, increasing contrast with top head and black head uh, transform. Incorrect image crop. Uh, this is because of the image alignment technique is wrong. So we can fix that by increasing the number of uh, the feature comparison between the input image and uh, the sample. The contour drawing error right here. So you can see that the, the circle is really nearby the number one. So it lost. And some of uh, the common mistake, but uh, they are mainly because of the user. Like uh, the comma right here make the zero is like nine. Or number three right here, and number five in horizontal or vertical line right here is really, it's really a bad handwritten text. So uh, it's really hard for the model to understand. So I create another set to um, which remove uh, the user errors to uh, you know evaluate the model better. So evaluation on the 103 constrained images. Constraint is the constraint about the phone type phone size and spacing and background camera angles and lighting you can see that the sample right here uh, the word is clean number is clean and the number here is not allowed to out of the circle limitation okay uh, so the, you know, so you can see that uh, student index the name and student ID right here the result of 103 constrained images is better than the 100 unconstrained set and uh, the number right here, you can see it. Uh, for the score, it's really good. Okay, uh, it's really good. I will go through the results. So, evaluation on video. So, uh, the real um, system is not like um, recognizing on each image, it's different. Like um, for name and student ID, you can have lexicon search, you can have class list to support for the accuracy of them. But the score, you don't have anything to support it, to increase the accuracy of the score. But uh, with video, we got a lot of frame, continuously frame. So we can, uh, so I use this criteria. If we recognize score and student index are the same for three consecutive times, it will update the score into class list and it will raise the accuracy uh, so much. So I can use a lot more uh, criteria with the image um, uh, pre-processing. Like uh, you remember the the biggest uh, rectangular, okay? So we can use a criteria of the edge, of the area of the ratio, or maybe uh, use the criteria of the name and student ID recognized. So if the output of the model and the Output in the class list are similar. We uh, we retain the information, but if they are really really different, we will uh, yeah you know eliminate the picture, eliminate the result. 
So uh, the final accuracy is about 95.55%. Uh, 43 out of 45 test papers correctly updated. So, um, so let's move to the dem demo of my system. Hello everyone, so uh, this is the demo of my automatic scoring system. So after the teacher um, scoring on the test paper, they put the test paper under the camera. As you can see that the camera is about 15 to 20 centimeters above the desk and see the light uh, condition is quite good. Okay, so uh, the image of the test paper will be transmitted into the phone's camera and then transmitted into uh, the web server. And then the laptop will download the image from web server to pre-process, to recognize and upload into Excel file. So this is the, uh, my phone screen. You can see this IP webcam right here. And uh, now let's see some setting of that. Okay, in video, uh, I use the main camera, primary camera. The photo uh, resolution here is 1920 uh, multiply 1080 pixels. The quality is 63, uh, no flip, a frame per second 20. And on flash mode default, uh, if you uh, if the light is dark, you can use the flashlight to increase the recognition performance. Okay, so um, here I click on start server. You can see that the address of uh, you can see the picture of the test paper. So this is my laptop screen. So as you can see that uh, the IB webcam here, uh, they create for us um, a web server uh, with address that 192 uh, port uh, A0A0. A0. As you can see, uh, this is the picture, uh, no video browser. Okay, so the address of uh, here, uh, we can take the address a copy image link right here. And uh, yes, uh, this is the, uh, Visual Studio Code. So if we run the program, you can see that the graphic user interface right here, this is the, my thesis defense with uh, the logo of my university. Uh, you can see that the video URL, so you we, we can paste the web server address. Uh, this is the class, uh, class list, you can browse uh, file right here. So we have the class list right here. As you can see, uh, the class list have a uh, student ID, the name, and the score. This, this column is for, um, yeah, it's for us to easy to know that the recognition is true or false. And this is the predict score of the, uh, of the system. So you can see that uh, there's no uh, score. There's no score here first. Okay, there's no call, let's save it. So let's um, turn it off. And okay. Okay, now the user can browse files. Uh, we choose the class, it, uh, class list here is the class list um, that we want to update the score on. Uh, so open. So after that, uh, every information is up here. Uh, so let's start to start recognizing. Okay, uh, after click the start, you can see that the, uh, the image, okay, the, uh, the score is updated for 1710725415, and here another score, 1710286, uh, 1.5, a uh, 986, okay, uh, that's good, okay, that's good. So um, the system will save uh, the information after I click save here. So let's see the classes again. So as you can see that they haven't updated any score, but after I click uh, the button, okay, I just uh, want to, uh, 
Okay, I, I want I want to add more uh, paper for you to understand. Five one eight three three four nine seven. Okay, that's good too. So after I click save. Okay, so the index confirmed and uh, the score confirmed here is for the update the score. So click plus list again. So you can see that the score 555.25 five, five is good. Okay, 4.5115 here. So uh, the accuracy is 100%, that's good, right? Okay, let's see a uh, uh, solution. Okay, you, know, you can see right here is um, the machine. Okay, okay, you can see here is the machine record the name and the student ID and score of every time. But if the name, the student ID and score is uh, three consecutively uh, recognizing the same, they will you know, update the score into the system. Right here, you can see that one, two, three. Okay, so uh, here is one, two, three. That's good. One, um, here's one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, okay, you can see that. Uh, one, two, three, four. That's three times. Okay, so that's the demo.